Hello, Latin geometry students. In this assignment, we are going to talk about trigonometry, which just means measuring stuff in triangles. So remember back when we had this problem, we talked about similarity. We had something called scale factor. And scale factor here, the 12 in this case, is just a measurement that tells us how many times larger one object is than the other. See, we have these two cars here, and they're the same shape, just different sizes. And every measurement in the little car could be multiplied by 12, the scale factor, to find the corresponding measurement in the larger car. Or you can go backwards and take any of the measurements in the large car and divide by 12 to get the corresponding measurement in the small car. Well, we're going to do the same thing except with triangles. Here we have a simple 3, 4, 5 right triangle. And we're going to take this triangle and we're going to create a larger one that's three times larger. So our scale factor is 3. That means that if I divide any sets of corresponding measurements, we can see that the uh, measurement in the large triangle is exactly three times larger than the measurement in the small triangle. 3 times 3 to get 9, 5 times 3 to get 15, and 4 times 3 to get 12. All those measurements in the big triangle are exactly 3 times larger than those in the small triangle. What we didn't talk about is that there is a consistent ratio within each triangle. In other words, here in the small triangle, we're going to take the short leg, the 3, and divide it by the hypotenuse. 3 divided by 5 is 0.6. If we, if we divide the corresponding measurements in the larger triangle, here 9 divided by 15, they're different numbers, but we get the same thing when we divide. We get 0 0.6. We can actually do this with any pair of sides in the triangles. Here we did the short leg divided by the hypotenuse, and that was equal to the short leg divided by the hypotenuse. But we can do this with the short leg divided by the long leg. In the small triangle, I get 0.75. Notice it's a different number than it was last time with different sides. But in the larger triangle, if we divide the same two sides, we still get the same decimal, 0.75. The short leg divided by the long leg is the same thing. We can do this with the long leg and the hypotenuse as well. 4 divided by 5 is 0.8, and 12 divided by 15 is also 0.8. Here we divided the long leg by the hypotenuse in each of them and got the same measurements. And sometime a couple thousand years ago, somebody decided they could use that idea to figure out some weird measurements in real life. Here we have a tree, and over here we have a little stick figure dude who wants to know how tall this tree is. Well, the easy way to do it is to climb the tree with a rope, but then you risk getting hurt, and what if the tree was a cliff or on fire? You want to find other ways to measure stuff, something we call indirect measurement. We're going to measure this tree without actually having to climb the tree. The way you go about doing this is first our little stick figure friend here measured how far away from the bottom of the tree they were. It's 100 feet in this case. And you'll notice that the height of the tree and the distance away from the tree, these make a right angle. It's going to end up being a right triangle. Now, for this to be a right triangle, our little stick figure friend has to spot this line that's uh, showing uh, the line to the top of the tree. Now, you can't actually draw this line, and the person can't actually measure it because they'd have to be able to fly. But what they can do is take a protractor or some other angle measuring tool and measure this angle right here. and They get 31 degrees. So we can use just this information to figure out how tall the tree is. What we're going to do is we're going to take the tree away and just look at the triangle here. And this is the triangle we are trying to solve, uh, to find a measurement of. We're trying to find that length x. It's the short leg in the triangle. We know the bottom, the bottom length, which is the long leg in the triangle, and we know one of the angle measures. So what we're going to do, what somebody did a long time ago, is they came up with a cool idea of they grabbed a sheet of parchment, and they went up and they started drawing a similar triangle to it. Now, we know these two triangles are similar because they have a 90-degree angle and a 31-degree angle, 90 and 31. You have to be really careful and really precise to draw the little triangle on paper exactly right. But if you do, then you know the triangles are similar because of the angle-angle rule. Once we know that, now we can use this little triangle to find the missing measurement in the big triangle. But we're going to do it a slightly different way than we did before because we have a weird shortcut coming up. Now, since the triangles are similar, we should know that when I divide these two measures, 3.1 divided by 6, and when we divide these two measures, x over 100, we should get the same thing. So we take out our calculator and figure this out. 3.1 divided by 6 is this weird decimal, and get used to some weird decimals in this, uh, in this class. Uh, for trigonometry, we always have some fun decimals. 3.1 divided by 6 is 0.5167. So x divided by 100 should also be 0.5167. Because the triangles are similar to each other. So we have this equation. We're just going to try to solve it. It's an easy one to solve. We're just going to multiply both sides by 100 to get x by itself over here on the left. And when we do that, we get that x was 51.67. In other words, this tree is 51.67 feet tall.
Now, it took us a few minutes to do that one problem. So what we want to do is find a way to make this kind of problem shorter. Now, there's a couple different ideas that people have had, including one really clever one that you'd understand, is that for to solve problems like this, is to take a whole book and fill its pages with similar triangles that we could use. So if we wanted to solve this problem, we just go flipping through the book and find the triangle that's got a 31 and a 90 degree angle, and then we could use that triangle to solve the, for the measurement of this triangle. But it'll still take a few minutes to do that. You either got to draw the triangle or look it up. And our goal is to take this problem and get it down to about eh, 15 or 20 seconds. To do that, we are going to use something called trigonometry. We can shorten this up. Unfortunately, for trigonometry to work, there's a whole bunch of stuff we got to know, all this stuff you see on the screen. Here's a list of the stuff we got to be able to do and understand in order to make a problem like that just a few seconds long. So first off, you've probably seen these buttons on a calculator before. Sine, abbreviated S-I-N. Cosine and tangent, abbreviated C-O-S and T-A-N. We're going to use those things. We're going to have to know what those are. We're also going to have to realize that all of our work is going to be in right triangles and only right triangles. So if we do it with right triangles, then maybe we can go back and do it for other triangles. But it turns out if you do it for right triangles, there's a trick. So you don't have to have uh, figure out ways to do it for other triangles. You can get around that. So we only have to do this for right triangles, triangles with a 90 degree angle in it. The other things we're going to have to know is how to label our triangle using these three letters, O, A, and H, the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Those are going to be the three sides of every triangle. We're going to have to know this word, and this is the word that ties the whole thing together. If you see the letters here, it's a nonsense word, so ka toa. The letters here actually tie the sine, cosine, and tangent, S, C, and T, to the sides of the triangle, O, A, and H. O, H, A, H, O, A, those are the parts of the word Sokotoa. So this is the word that will tie this stuff together. And there's one other little side note thing you got to know, and that's this little funny symbol. This is the Greek letter T, theta. Theta, or the Greek letter T, for some reason, just starts getting used for, just like we use X, but for angles. When we have a triangle and we're talking about its angles, if we don't know the measures of the angles, we start to use Greek letters. I don't know why, but it would look something like this. Here's a triangle. We don't know the measure of this angle. And so instead of putting an X there, representing they don't know it, they use this letter theta, this zero with a line through it. And we use that again to represent angles that we don't know the measure of. Okay, so the first step in trigonometry is to identify O, A, and H. All right, to do that, we always start with a right triangle. It's got to be a right triangle. Again, if it's not a right triangle, we're not going to be able to do this stuff. So the next thing we do is we're going to pick one of the angles, not the right angle, one of the other two little acute angles. Now, you can pick either one. Here, I'm going to pick the one on the bottom left. That's what people tend to pick. And we want to label our sides O, A, and H, opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. You should already know the hypotenuse. That's the long, slanty side. Opposite means the side away from our, that's not near our angle, the one side our angle is not touching. You see how this marked angle here touches the bottom and the hypotenuse? Well, the one side it's not touching over here, that becomes the opposite. The adjacent side is the side between our angle and the 90 degrees. It's the one next to it. Remember, adjacent means next to it. So again, the opposite side, or O, is always on the other side of the triangle from your selected angle. The hypotenuse is the long slanty side. It's always on the, across the from the right angle. And then the adjacent side is always next to your angle and connecting your angle, your selected one, to the 90 degrees. Now, we said you could pick your angle. Let's say, for example, you pick the other angle instead. If you do this, now the opposite is down here on the bottom. The adjacent is over here on the right. Those two have switched. The hypotenuse doesn't change. If you switch angles, just the O and the A switch places. Okay, so in each of these pictures, we have a triangle with an angle marked. It's a right triangle. We want to identify what the red side is. Is it O, A, or H? Okay, the first triangle, the marked side is the hypotenuse, and the second one is the adjacent side, and the third one is the opposite. In the bottom row, number four, it's the opposite side. Number five is the hypotenuse, and number six is the adjacent side. So now, just a few minutes ago, when we described dividing sides in a triangle, we were describing it using the words short leg and long leg. Now we're going to get rid of all that stuff, and instead of using these phrases, short leg and long leg, we're going to use opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So all of our problems, all the problems we do is, uh, when we're trying to find the measurements of the triangle, we're going to use these fractions. We're going to either divide the opposite by the hypotenuse, or the adjacent by the hypotenuse, or the opposite divided by the adjacent. 
These fractions, each of them has its own name. The fractions are named sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine is what we call it when you're dividing the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine is when you divide the adjacent by the hypotenuse. And tangent is the opposite divided by the adjacent. The short way to remember this in, our tri in a triangle is with the phrase Sokotoa. Now, this part that's highlighted here, this is important. You're going to have to memorize this or just remember how to spell the word Sokotoa because the word Sokotoa gives us all the information we have up here. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's S-O-H. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's C-A-H. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, and it's T-O-A. So we use Sokotoa to remember the definitions for sine, cosine, and tangent. So now we're going to take all that information and show you what a basic trigonometry problem is going to look like. Now, if you don't have that memorized yet, the word Sokotoa is up top already, but the definitions for sine, cosine, and tangent, you're eventually going to have to know. Here's our problem. We have a triangle. We know the measurement of one side, and we're looking for the measurement of another. It's a right triangle, and we know one of the other angles. In this case, it's 45. We can use Sokotoa to figure out that missing angle. Here's how we do it. Step one for all of our problems. Step one is identify our sides as opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Is X the side we're looking for? Is it the opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse from the angle that we know? X is the opposite. And the 11.31 is the hypotenuse. So we have to start with this, identifying our sides O, A, and H. Once we know this, we have to ask ourselves, is that an example of sine or cosine or tangent? Which one, sine, cosine, or tangent, uses opposite and hypotenuse? And it's sine. We call sine and cosine and tangent trigonometric functions or trig functions. So this problem is going to be a sine problem. Once we know that, we have to set up an equation. Our equation will look something like this. We'll say the sine equals the opposite of the hypotenuse. Now, sine or cosine or tangent, it's always of the angle that we're using. So we're going to say it's the sine of 45 degrees. So sine of 45 degrees equals the opposite, x, over the hypotenuse, 11.31. The sine of 45 is equal to x divided by 11.31. Now, here, this equation's got a decimal down here and sine 45 over here on the left. But that's sine 45. That's just another decimal. That's what we're supposed to get when we divide opposite by hypotenuse in this triangle. And we don't have to turn that into a decimal. We'll let our calculators do it. All we have to do is get x alone. We have to get rid of this divided by 11.31. How do we do that? We multiply both sides by 11.31. And this is what you're going to have to do in your calculator or on Google or using Desmos. You're going to go and type 11.31 times the sine of 45 to figure out what x is. And if you do that, you should get 7.997 or something really close to 8. This is a basic trigonometry function and trigonometry problem.